Hey, Christy. Hey, Lindsay. What does a nosy pepper do? What? Gets jalapeno business. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm bummed. Hi, I'm Christy, a backyard gardener from Colorado. These days, gardening has gotten very popular, and my friends and I have noticed more and more people picking our brains for tips and troubleshooting about gardening. We're not experts. We just learned a lot about gardening from the mistakes we made along the way. So welcome to Upside Down Tulips, a fun podcast that celebrates gardening gone wrong. Upside Down. Hello, gardeners. And hello, wannabe gardeners. And hello and welcome to Lindsay. Hi there, everybody. Our new special guest host for this week. Lindsay and I, we've known each other for a long time. We have. And I was trying to figure out exactly when we met. And I don't think I can pinpoint it. I can't either. But I just know that if you folks who live in the Denver metro area would know you as really one of the best character actors in town. Oh, I'll go on. You are. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. You just play such a wide variety of roles. I don't think anybody in town has the, the biggest, ra- bigger range than you. Oh, gosh. That's so nice. I do. I do love, I do love getting into the goofier, the bigger roles, the, the broad and rambling and multiple. <laughs> yeah. You, did you ever have an ingenue period? No, I never did. I don't think did. you did. I'm not an, I've never been an ingenue. And of course you are a gardener. I am. I'm very much, um, I'm, I would say that I'm fall into the area between gardener and wannabe gardener. Ah. I do it. And it's all an experiment all the time. That's why you're the perfect guest host yeah. for Upside Down Tulips. And you also have been, you're also a member of the garden party. That's right. Like, I am. From, almost from, since the very beginning. Yeah, I, I did. I got in there pretty soon. I was ex- I was so excited when I found out about you and Edith doing this podcast. And it was exactly when I needed that kind of um, engagement in in something other Something other than theater, something outdoors, something. And it was the pandemic. And it was the pandemic and there needed to be lightness and (laughs) I could go out and putter on. I had a balcony at the time and a bunch of container plants. I was, bless my heart, really trying to get to work. Didn't we answer a question of yours in Mailbag about your really pathetic radishes? Yes, you did. (laughs) You did. I think you may have, you maybe have answered one or two. Um, I have lots of questions. I have lots of challenges. And 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 people who listen to the podcast, you've also been an actor in some of our pod plays. Mm-hmm. And you'll hear Lindsay today in some of our pod plays That's too. Right. We got two brand new pod plays. Yeah, love them. And I'm really excited about this topic today, Lindsay, because it was your suggestion yeah. um, that we're talking about hydroponics. Yeah. And I didn't know much about it, and boy, is it fascinating! It really is. There's much more to it. Than you would think. And you can really get as involved as you want to get. And you can do things that are a little simpler as well. Yeah. Yeah. I'm well, definitely on the simpler end of things. Yeah. I just, I already sent a link to my handsome and handy husband to tell him that I want one for Christmas. Oh, yeah. I don't know if I can wait that long now. Yeah. I know. So. Christmas is a long time. Don't you have a birthday or something coming yeah. up? <laughs> oh, I just had it. <laughs> oh, darn yeah, it. Yeah, I know. Uh, Arbor Day uh, something. <laughs> you know, that would be perfect. Yeah. I, uh, gardeners, that would be the time to give a gardener a gift. I think that's actually something that we should start. Now's a good time to plug the upside down tulips, mugs, and t-shirts for right. all the gardeners. In oh your my life. God, Lindsay, that is such a good Our idea. Birthday. I'm gonna be your marketing team. Oh, I love it. I love it. Well, speaking of marketing, um, I do want to tell folks also that um I have a play opening in the Denver Metro area, and this is the year of magical thinking and at the Aurora Fox. And what's really cool about it is that it's starring Denver's legendary Billy McBride, who you folks may know as the old woman who used to live in a shoe and now is the old woman who gardens. Yes, this is going to be wonderful. I cannot wait to see this. So as soon as we're done uh, with the podcast, I'm going to throw on some lipstick and get my fancy opening night dress on and head out to opening night. Oh, it's going to be so great. Christy and Billy, a formidable team. I really, I truly can't wait to see what you've created together. Oh, she is just, a, she's yeah. amazing. Yeah. And it's something to do. Have you done a one-woman show before? I have done one, and it's a doozy. I did one with seven characters in it, and it was uh, it's a lot. 
Well, Billy is killing it. Oh, so. I don't doubt it at all. It's it's definitely scary. You go out there and you're like, hmm, this is uh there's nobody to save me if I start to right. you like only I can write the ship at this point. Yeah. So yeah. Oh, well, we'll put a I'll put a link in the show notes, folks, for folks who want to go and get tickets to oh, come and see yeah. and see Billy in that. Don't miss that one. That's one that everyone's gonna wish that they had seen. Um also want to give people a heads up that the Denver Urban Gardens Grow a Garden Kit is now available. They have 2,000 garden kits available. We will put a link in our website on how people can get their Denver Urban Gardens, but they are giving seeds and seedlings. It is pay as you wish. Wow. Is that the right phrase? Pay what you can. Pay what you can. Pay what you can. That's great. That's and, a great program. And if you don't, friends, if you don't have that, if you're not from the Denver metro area, because we know we have listeners all over the world, check out mm. your local community because this is a program that happens all over the place. The Grow a Garden, Pay What You Can basis with a free option where you can get seeds and seedlings from Denver Urban Gardens. Uh. That's so cool. I, I'm going to have to look into that. I, and I know a lot of people who should look into that. That's well, wonderful. It's a great way to learn how to garden. Yeah. And of course, now is also the time to winter sow. Oh, my gosh. Now I feel like there's so much to do. Yeah. I haven't <laughs> done it at all yet. I'm going to start doing it tomorrow because I've been busy with the play. But friends, if you don't know, winter sowing is an outdoor method of seed starting you can do right now. You can just listen to episode 25, take out your jugs and learn how to winter sow. Or... Episode 72, more winter sowing, how to bring seeds to life in the dead of winter. I will come back when our next episode. I'll tell you about everything I have put in a milk jug. Oh, I'm going to go wait. crazy tomorrow. I'm going to um, I'm gonna start collecting them. I've got a few from last year, but uh, I don't know what to do between like all my indoor things and the outdoor things. And I don't know. Yeah. It's a big transition year now, isn't it? It is. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what, what, tell us about your garden, Lindsay. Well, uh, right now, um, not, it, it's pretty frozen over. <laughs> sure. Um, yeah. There's a big sheet of ice over all of the garden beds. This is the first year I've ever had an outdoor garden in my whole adult life. Um, so I'm thrilled. I was just thrilled. I went crazy last year. Um, with what did you grow? Oh, man. We grew tomatoes, um, six different tomato plants. Good, yeah. Um, so much basil. We grew greens. We grew arugula, which bolted almost immediately. <laughs> but we had it for a couple weeks, and it was great. Um, flowers. I grew uh, snap peas, radishes that were more um, successful uh -huh. uh, this time than when they were penny-sized. And um, flowers, sunflowers, gosh, zucchini, on and on. Okay, I have a question for yeah. you then. You grew zucchini? Yeah. And did you get some produce out of it? We did. We didn't save that much of it from the squirrels. We are basically a squirrel just buffet. Uh-huh. Um, but uh, we did get some, and I, I don't know. I have heard about your troubles, and I don't understand. Your garden looks like Eden out there. <laughs> I don't know why the zucchini. Yeah, I couldn't do it. Edith couldn't do it. Karen, who yeah. plays the squirrel. yeah. She didn't. She couldn't grow zucchini. Why is that about? But we're. But you live a little bit more across town, so maybe there's. Yeah, I don't. Oh, I do. So I do not understand See? that. So now I hope you don't feel so bad <laughs> when you think like you at least could grow zucchini. Yeah, and I didn't have enough zucchini for sneak some zucchini in your neighbor's porch day. Yeah, that's a that's a disappointing day. That feels like a sad day. I know. I couldn't. Didn't have any zucchini bread. I didn't have any zucchini fritters. I couldn't. Oh, it was just a very sad. That is very sad summer. This is the summer, though. It's yeah, going to happen. Oh, I have a good feeling about it. I well, do. Um, what are some of your favorite garden mistakes that you've had? Oh my God, I don't even know where to begin. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I think the favorite one of this past year. This last season was we moved into our new apartments that has a sort of back courtyard area with some garden bed possibilities um, in November. So we didn't know what it looks like in the summer, really. Um, and I watched, you know, as spring was approaching, there was this one bed I, we planned it out. I thought this will be the flower bed. It's all vines. It's trash. It needs to be cleaned up and um, it gets a lot of hot afternoon sun. This is going to be great for all those sun loving plants. And so I cleaned it up. All this labor, I put in zinnias, I put in sunflowers, mm. I got a couple of cat mints, and um, 
it ended up not being a sunbed <laughs> because the tree that was nearby as the spring wore on in the summer, it filled out uh, as it as it as its nature <laughs> as is, as is its nature, which is something I should have I guess I should have bloomed into, but I didn't. And then the sun, the angle in the sky changed, as the, and it was a shade bed. And I had all ah. of these bless their hearts, though those sunflowers and those zinnias, they did come up and they bloomed, but they had to work for it. Were they really tiny? Um, yeah, the zinnias were were about like quarter size <laughs> yeah. zinnias um we had a lot of them but they were really i'm <laughs> struggling and i was like i am so sorry everyone i really uh ooh, i misjudged misjudged well i had the opposite problem once because i had a big walnut tree uh -huh. and that and i would plant all these things underneath it and then when the tree had to come down because we had there was a fungus that took out all the walnut trees in uh -huh. colorado and so then everything i had in there all of a sudden was used to all this sun and all died and fried. And so oh, I had to figure out a new way to put something in that bag. Yeah. Yeah. And trees can grow. So, yeah. Bl bless them. They sure do. <laughs> well, okay, friends. If you hear words or terms you're not familiar with, please check out the always funny and usually informative Upside Down Dictionary at our website, UpsideDownTulips.com. Or you can click on the link in our show notes. We also have some fun stuff on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest. And, you know, if you want to be like Lindsay, you could join the garden party, which means yeah. that you throw a couple bucks a month so we can keep the podcast free and we can pay for our bills. And we really love doing the podcast for you. And the more people who join the garden party, the more we can do Upside Down Tulips. Yeah, it's wonderful. Join the garden party. You can get fun stuff. That's right. You can also click on the link if you want something with a tulip on it, mm -hmm. <laughs> like a mug or a We've got really nice journals or sweatshirts. And right now we have a special treat for you before we start talking about hydroponics. And that will be a brand new episode of our true crime podcast called Who Killed Rosemary? Previously on Who Killed Rosemary? She was fine the day before. Life was finally perfect. And now, she is dead. I just don't know what could have happened. Who killed my Rosemary? Who is telling you to stay quiet? John Elway. It's the Yard Nazi. We shouldn't be blaming the victim. A bit of advice, Miss Contour. Make sure you are up to date on your paperwork and careful how you use a silent H while you are visiting our humble community. Was I being threatened? Could I still win an award for this podcast? For Upside Down Tulips, I am Misty Contour, and this is Who Killed Rosemary? It is winter and the snow gently falls, blanketing the ground. Under a covering of snow, all gardens become equal. The Yard Nazi has filed a form and put an injunction on the podcast. I've lost my sponsors. Edith has stopped returning my phone calls. I feel sluggish and confused. Come on, Broncos. All we need to do is get 20 yards on a fourth down. Interception? Oh, Russell Wilson. What in the name of Patrick Mahomes and all that is holy is happening? Edith, Edith, it's Misty Contour, and this is Who Killed Rosemary? Go away. Please talk to me. I'm sorry, I can't. The Yard Nazi filed a form. I am not supposed to talk about who killed Rosemary. Please let me in. It's so cold out here. We won't talk about who killed Rosemary, I promise. Well, okay. Would you like some coffee? If it's not too much trouble. Sugar? Honey? No, thank you, dear. <laughs> There's something different about Edith. I can't quite put my finger on it. She had a little bounce in her step and looks younger than her many, many years. Hey. Then I realized, Edith, have you done something different with your hair? Well, I have been getting my hair done by my new best friend, Tess. We met at a support group for people who lost their rosemaries. She inherited a great deal of money and uses it to make the world a better place. So she's in Harris, heiress. Excuse me. Edith is sponsored by 
Tess's tresses. Want more full and voluminous hair? Try Tess's tresses. Use promo code my new best friend. You have sponsors now. Yes, and you need to go. I have an appointment, and Tess doesn't like it when I am late. Hmm. Rosemary. The Harris heiress. Russell Wilson. Maybe it's all connected. Looks like I have some podcasting to do, no matter what the yard Nazi says. If you have information related to the death of Rosemary, please email upsidedontulips at gmail.com. Thank you for listening, and tune in for upcoming episodes. And of course, folks, you recognize the wonderful Edith Weiss in that first part of Who Killed Rosemary. And she'll come back. No, she won't come back. Rosemary will come back. <laughs> Who Killed Rosemary will come back um, after we talk about hydroponics for yeah. a little bit. Oh, yeah. Get into it. Okay. So, Lindsay, did you know that the word hydroponics comes from the Greek word working with water? I think that I had read that. Yeah. Hydroponics. Hydroponics. Ponics means labor, basically, right? Oh, yeah. To work. Yeah. Which is so interesting. And it was, so we're talking today about growing plants without soil. Mm -hmm. um, and hydroponics have been cultivated for more than 2,000 years. Oh. People have been doing it. Um, it we think about like the Hanging Gardens of Babylon oh. or Aztec Floating Gardens uh, that took advantage of high moisture areas where nutrient-rich soil was in short supply. I didn't know any of that. Isn't that That's interesting? very cool. I think... It, what I also thought was interesting about it is like if you've ever seen a weed or a plant grow in the crack of a sidewalk. Yeah, all the time. That is a rudimentary form of hydroponic gardening at work. How is that? Because it, it's just relying upon water. Oh. There's no soil. Right. It's not like in the crack where it goes down into the dirt. It's just. Yeah. Oh, yes. Of course. That makes sense. Um. So we're talking about. Growing plants anchored in a container with a solution of water mm -hmm. and has some kind of nutrient. And I didn't know this, that almost any crop can be grown hydroponically. But the most common are lettuces, mm -hmm. tomatoes, peppers, cucumbers, strawberries, watercress, celery, and of course, a lot of people do herbs. Herbs, yeah. That, so those are all ones that especially are like to be, well, wet. Like to really like, they like the <laughs> roots to be moist. Shout, shout out to moist. Shout out to moist. Nice. Good, mm -hmm. Lindsay. <laughs> I knew I was going to work that in sometime oh, today. Very Proud good. of myself. You get extra points. Mm -hmm. Thanks. <laughs> right. So you can't like do root vegetables like potatoes or right. carrots. They'll just be rutabagas. Well, there's, yeah, though, just, there's no root. I mean, there's no root to go down. Well, I guess it would just turn into mash, basically. Is that yeah. what would happen? I don't think it would even work. Would yeah. It? I don't know that it would actually germinate yeah, under right. those circumstances. Well, um, now, there there are two ways you can uh, people kind of do it. Is one, you can make your own little homemade kit and do it, or you can buy a kit. Mm -hmm. And if I'm correct, Lindsay, you have, a, you have one of the kits, right? I did. I got a kit um, for Christmas. From my boyfriend, which was so thoughtful. And I think he thinks it'll also make me saner during the winter. <laughs> so it's kind of, it's really for the household. Uh -huh. <laughs> bring bring my anxiety level down a notch. Well, tell us all about your kit. How, how big is it? Oh, it's very cool. I'd say that it's like a foot and a half long. Okay. By like maybe 10 inches deep. It's not very, it's really tabletop. It's it's pretty small, but it's got 12 little pod holes in it. And each hole hole has like a, a plastic cage that you put a sponge into. And the sponge is sort of the growing medium or the anchoring medium mm -hmm. where you put your seeds um, and they dangle down into a tank of water. It comes with nutrients um, that you sort of constitute with water because it does need nutrients. Um, so it's not getting into those micro nutrients from the soil. Right. Yeah. So it comes with that. And uh, it's got LED lights uh, above that you can kind of telescope up. Um, I'm talking with my hands a lot right now, <laughs> which I realize is not as helpful for our listeners at home as it is for you. But you know I'm what I'm talking about. I'm finding it really about. enjoyable. 
I find so the glad. hands are really adding a lot of value to the information. I swear if I sat on my hands, I'd be mute. I wouldn't be able to speak anymore. Um, but so it kind of comes with all of the pieces. And then um, uh, he also gave me for Christmas these packets of like all these different lettuces and a bunch of different wow. herbs. And so I just thought of it like a big experiment and I sewed a bunch of stuff in there and I'm seeing what's coming up. Did you fill every single pod? I decided not to. I left a few of them open because I thought that's just a lot of stuff to get very close together. Uh -huh. And I don't think it needs quite as much space as it does in maybe a garden. But still, plants, roots, leaves, they need some space. And so they're not crowding each other out and things. So. Right, because when you see pictures of yeah. these hydroponics, Oh, they're kits, ridiculous. They're full of all this yeah. lettuces and yeah. herbs and things like that. And you think they look crowded to me. They look super crowded. I'm like, that's staged. I well. don't know. <laughs> Although I have seen some people like actually growing it. It can get really, you know, stuff can get bushy pretty fast. But that to me doesn't look like a, that's not uh -huh. sustainable. So you fill this container mm -hmm. with water. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, does it matter what kind of water you use? Can you use it from the tap or did you use filtered water? I or? first used filtered water. Um, and then when I cleaned it out, because you're supposed to do that every two or three weeks. Oh, okay. And refill, I used distilled water. Oh. Um, I think that the tap water really kind of depends. It can get a little finicky. And more finicky than it gets just if it's in potting soil or something. The solids that can come in water if you've got hard water that's not great mm -hmm. the calcium the chlorine the fluoride oh that's interesting all of those things are not maybe great so filtered at least is what has been recommended um and uh yeah i did that and i put a couple of seeds in you know the bottom of each of these little sponges i grew about eight things not 12 and um the lettuces are going like gangbusters really yeah i picked a couple i'd never heard of because i was like that's fun let's see what Paris blah 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 is I don't even remember. Is it a it, romaine lettuce? Uh, I believe so. That's yeah. what I grow on my in the earth. Oh, is that's it? That's my new favorite. I got that from Botanical Interest, and I love it. Oh, is it Paris cause? Yes. Oh, wonderful. That's a great variety. Well, it's doing the best so far. Um, the herbs I've not had as much luck with, and I don't know if it's because I don't know how to germinate them. Sometimes mm. things need dark. Sometimes they need light to germinate. Yeah. And they're which under herbs, this light. Which herbs did you grow? Oh, a whole mess of them. Uh, let's see. Coriander, mm -hmm. um, a.k.a. cilantro, uh, chives, Italian parsley, sage. Um, uh, I think that those rosemary. Oh, um, really? Yeah. From the seed? Yeah, from the seed. That is an incredibly brave thing to do. Yeah, well, it has sprouted. Get out. It did. The, the rosemary and mint sprouted. None of the rest did anything. Bub kiss. Oh. <laughs> um, and I thought also maybe I was like, well, maybe the, also the seeds are old. I don't know exactly the source of them. Mm. But I um, cleaned them out. I took the old seeds out that weren't doing anything. And I actually put some of the coriander seeds that you gave me mm -hmm. for being in the garden party. Oh. Yeah. Because I couldn't do anything with them outside. I couldn't get them to winter sow or direct sow. I don't know what I did wrong. But they're coming up now. Hey. Yeah, they're coming up in the hydroponics. It was, that's what it wanted, apparently. So I'm very excited about well, that. Well, that's very fascinating yeah. to me. And now you, you say it has its own light mm -hmm. that comes with it. Yeah. And if I'm right, that as the plants get taller, you can um, lift up the light so that it grows with the plants. Is that right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, up to a certain point. It, but it does lift up at least like eight or so inches. Okay. Which is cool. So it can kind of... You can allow your garden to grow and, and um, get taller and bushy and not have to compete for so much light and not get fried. Mm, mm -hmm. um, yeah. And and how – is this one of those ones, Lindsay, where um, as soon as you plug it in, it'll be on for eight, 16 hours yeah. and off for eight? Yeah. See, exactly. now that – so you don't have to worry about plugging – once you – have it in, the light just does what it does. Yeah, it does what it does. And you can choose between if you want light that's more like vegetable mm. focused or uh -huh. if you're growing things that are more blooming and flowers, then that's a different kind of LED. I cannot go into details because I do not understand <laughs> it. Uh, and it's got <laughs> it's to be oxygenated, the water, so the kit comes with a little pump right? that runs the nutrients and the oxygen through. And then the roots can just grow, grow, grow because they don't have to fight to get through soil and that and i've heard this too that when you germinate seeds that way they they the plants grow five times faster wow that's hmm. 
Mine, I don't know if mine are growing that. I think would say the lettuce probably is, and then the herbs they need they need a little more coaxing. I think that would be now. Do you keep yours in the in the kitchen? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And do you think it takes up a lot of space or? It doesn't because we have a rack in there. So we put it oh. on the top of the sort of shelf thing uh-huh. um, where the cat can't get it and help himself. <gasps> okay. And uh, it, it doesn't take up that much space and it's very accessible. The water's right there when you need it and uh-huh. the nutrients. So what is and... your cat, Archie, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Because, you know, I have a big problem with my cat, Leonardo <gasps> DiCaprio getting in my plants. Yeah, they and... love them. It's like a salad bar. The world is their salad bar. And so... Archie, you have a place where Archie can't get at it. Yeah, yeah. You think if you had it down lower, Archie would get at it? Oh, absolutely. Oh, no. He would okay. get it. No question he would get at it. <laughs> oh, I have dear. a few plants around that he can get into that I know are not toxic and he's a little bored with. But uh, yeah, this would be new and exciting and that lettuce would be gone. Yeah, I think like don't grow cat mint is what you're saying. Uh, well, y- you can grow it, but then you got to be prepared for the damage when your cats climb whatever it is they got to use to get to it. Now, does the I've heard sometimes people say the light that the hydroponic mm-hmm. kits have is super bright. It's pretty bright. It's brighter than the kitchen light in my kitchen. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't keep it in my bedroom at night. <laughs> I'll say that okay. because it stays on for such a long time. But in mm-hmm. the kitchen, I don't care. It can be very bright in there. And even if I want to go to bed, mm-hmm. it's not a thing. Now, you know, right now we're in my basement, mm-hmm. which is our little podcasting room slash yeah. my office. But so, but I, and this doesn't get a lot of natural uh-huh. light, but I could have a little hydroponic garden down here in my basement, couldn't I? Oh, I think so. I think even like the little shelf you're sitting next to. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. You could absolutely have a little spot right there and then you could like report on it every podcast. And then, but I would be worried about Leonardo DiCaprio. Yeah, well, they're rascals. They're rascals. Okay, well, we will continue to wrestle with that question and we're going to come back and we're going to talk more about hydroponic systems and also if you don't want to spend Spend the money for one, how yeah. you can make your own for yeah. people who are um, handsome and handy, like my handsome and handy husband. Very cool. But let's find out what's happening with Who Killed Rosemary? Previously on Who Killed Rosemary. Edith has stopped returning my phone calls. Edith is sponsored by Tess's Tresses. Want more full and voluminous hair? Try Tess's tresses. Use promo code my new best friend. She was fine the day before. Life was finally perfect. And now she is dead. I just don't know what could have happened. Who killed my Rosemary? John Elway. Did Rosemary have any enemies? Oh, Russell Wilson. For upside down tulips, I am Misty Contour. And this is Who Killed Rosemary? Tess, from Tess's Tresses, the Harris heiress. That's me. Excuse me. Tess's Tresses is sponsored by Tess's Tresses. Want more full and voluminous hair? Try Tess's Tresses. Use promo code Edith's best friend. Wow. It's my hair, huh? (laughs) I get that a lot. I discovered the secret to more full and voluminous hair, my herbal oil. And so I started Tess's Tresses to make the world a better place. It smells wonderful in here. An herbal evergreen quality that's fresh and green without being sweet. Your hair looks like it could use some fullness and volume. I feel more alert and able to concentrate. Would you like a free oil treatment? That's right. Just have a seat. I know that smell. It's... it's... Oh my gourd. I have to go. But wait, come back. That's why her hair looks so amazing. That's why she befriended Edith. That's why she became the Harris heiress. And that's why she can use a silent H. And that's why the Denver Broncos finished the season 5 and 12. It was... Rosemary. And ultimately, it doesn't matter if I am right or I am wrong. Me and my dull, lifeless hair now have enough content to melt this thing for another year. If you have any information related to the death of Rosemary or want to be a sponsor, please email UpsideOnTulips at gmail.com. Thank you for listening and tune in for upcoming episodes. We're talking about hydroponic gardening. Mm -hmm. Lindsay, you have a kit. I do. What kind of kit do you have? I have one. It's 
It's spelled Q Y O. I think it might be Kyo. Kyo. I'm not, that's how I've heard a person pronounce it. Not a person from the company, though. I couldn't find like <laughs> okay. videos from the company. Well, we'll call so it Kyo. Let's do. Let's okay. why not? <laughs> um, and you were talking about how it needs nutrients. Yeah. That it came with nutrients, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Um, you also talked about like about a pH level. Yeah, that's something that I have read a fair amount about, like in terms of troubleshooting hydroponic systems. The pH level apparently can change really fast. Um, where it, when it's in the ground, the soil kind of buffers some of that. Gotcha. But when there's yeah. none of that, the pH level can change in a matter of like hours or over the course of a day depending on how much nutrients and, it's taken up or water. And so this and, would be like how acidic or sweet it is. Yeah. And okay. I don't have a clue what it's supposed to be. Um, that's where my knowledge stops. I'm sure that's available, <laughs> but I don't know. Uh, and I don't, I personally don't have a way to test mine yet. I'm I'm pretty newbie at all of this stuff. Well, that's interesting so. because there is a way to test your soil. Yeah. If it's what the pH level mm-hmm. is to see how sweet or acidic. Here out in the Denver metro area, we will have more sweet soil. Uh, and are there like accessories that come with it at all? Have you gotten any of the fancy accessories that you can have with this? Um, I don't even, well, you know, it came with like, um, uh, some little placards so you can label what you're growing Uh and some little rods so you can tie things to it. Uh, Many of them will probably need support and, um, little caps, little plastic caps that go on top of each of the sponge baskets Mm -hmm. to keep it moist. Nice job. Yeah. Got yeah. Two. That's two. That's a twofer right yeah, there. Yeah, that's really good. That's for you, Edith. Um, <laughs> and it. Uh, so it keeps them while they're germinating and then you uh-huh. take them off and expose them to light. So it's got that kind of stuff and, and oh, okay. the nutrients, of course. Okay. And have you had any trouble with getting algae at all? Not so far, but I have noticed that the seeds that aren't germinating are getting a little fuzzy. Ah, uh, that's get, not good. So I'm going to have to just take those out and see if I can find some seeds that'll do something. I've even mm. thought about pre-sprouting a couple, like in my closet in the paper towel. Sure. Doing that method yeah. and then dropping them in and seeing. Yeah, sure. That sounds like that sounds like a worthy experiment. Yeah, like the chives and the parsley and all, they're just mm-hmm. sitting there getting fuzzy. And then, then you do need to clean it out because mm. that can just go to everything else. So some pluses and some minuses That can happen when I winter sow in my milk jugs Yeah, where um, it'll – you know, things will be germinating really nicely. And then I'll look at some and it'll just start getting a little green yeah. stuff on the top. And I just go, oh, no, nothing's going to happen there. Yeah. Yeah. It's very disappointing. So, and in the algae and the um, mold and things, that is something to consider when doing these systems. It does have mm-hmm. to be cleaned out periodically and regularly in order to help prevent that kind of gotcha. stuff. But it does seem like, to me, it's so worth it. Yeah. Because... The benefits of doing hydroponics is that, one, you can garden in the winter. Yes. And depending upon your zone, I mean, we're zone 5B here, mm-hmm. um, that and to be able to have lettuce. Yeah. Is wonderful. Like that would be so lovely to be able to do something yeah. like that. It's I, I'm pretty excited. I don't know how big they're going to get. Because again, this is a smallish system. You Have you had a salad yet? Huge. It's not enough for a salad oh, okay. yet. Not, it's not there yet, but I'm so ready for it. But it's like, I but don't know. You just got it. Yeah, I just got it. And I have to um, uh, see what else wants to grow and maybe grow some more greens would give me more options. You could put a piece of lettuce on a sandwich. That's right. That I can do. <laughs> and you know what? It will be satisfying. But no Caesar yet. No Caesar. Okay. All right. <laughs> that's around the, that's you know, down the road of pace. Another benefit I really think that would be great to doing hydroponics is mm-hmm. that you don't have to weed. Yes. No weeding. And, and even though you have this moss or like the algae and fungus issues if, mm-hmm. you, if you're taking care of them or you're like closing the holes so the light doesn't get to the water it really cuts down on pests and diseases in a lot of ways so if you're not doing all the little yeah. holes make sure you cover up the yeah. other holes yeah. oh yeah, yeah. That makes total sense yeah so like we i use like a little electrical tape but i think there's some stickers and things some kits come with so that oh, you can clever. cover those up and just don't feed yeah. the algae if you don't need to. Yeah. Another use for duct tape. There you go. It's it's endless. The uses <laughs> are endless. You don't have to worry about squirrels eating your lettuce either. Oh my gosh. The squirrels. The squirrels this year, they were so bad. They were just such little jerks. And you know how I feel like I think they teach each other. Mm. So once they get established, yeah. you're kind of screwed. Yeah. It does feel like, and we have like a, there's, they live in the front porch, like on our, the tree in the front of our 
mm-hmm. building. And then they just climb over the roofs from the branches down to another tree, down right literally into the garden bed. You suck up all the veggies they want and then go right back up. And wow. I was like, oh, God, it's a super highway. Um, well, one thing I thought was interesting also about hydroponic systems is that there are two basic ways that people can do it. Mm-hmm. And one is an active system which uses pumps to circulate water. Mm-hmm. Or you can have a wick system that it you have water and then you have some sort of um, wick, wicking material that draws water up to the roots. Oh, interesting. And your system looks like it's a pump system, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, gotcha. And that you also um, will either have an open system or... When we garden out in the world, in the earth, that's an open system, Uh but a hydroponic is a closed system because it's recirculating the same water. Oh, yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Right. It seems like that saves a lot of water, though. Yeah, I think so. You do need to keep adding the nutrients to it. Um, Mm -hmm. If you get a kit or something, like those are easily available. And um, yeah, you just top off the water when you need to and keep adding the nutrients. And yeah, you're right. It saves actually quite a bit of water. It just seems like in the way the world is going. Yeah. But then you're using electricity to pump the water, which yeah. is you need resources and, for. And the light. And the light. Yeah. However, I just think like work with climate change and things that are, that are going, like ways that you can learn how to grow hydroponically would be a real wise way Yeah, and to I do it. I always was confused. I always would thought hydroponics would take more. I think it was because of the name. I was like, oh, you're sluicing water through it constantly, but yeah. it, that's not at all the case. And yeah. so you're recycling it yeah. through yeah. and you're not losing it. Yeah. It's not evaporating quickly. So you actually are saving a lot of water yeah. and the LEDs, I don't know how much, how much energy they take. I think you can get more and less efficient models. This is a pretty efficient model. It's and there are probably small. people who are doing it with solar panels too. Oh yeah. So they're pro- yeah probably some off the grid hydroponicers that have like amazing mm-hmm. gardens. You know, I bet I know where it's happening too. It's probably happening in the Netherlands. Mm. Yeah, that's where they're doing it. Yeah, they just get right on that stuff. <laughs> and the pot growers. Yeah, <laughs> they're very advanced, probably in the hydroponic world. I'm sure, <laughs> they're like we've been doing this for so yeah. long. We should have one on the show. Uh, you know, I actually have thought about having uh, somebody come in and tell us about. Um, pot growing. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, you know, there is no shortage of expertise in this town. Exactly There's true. There's to share. And I think in the state of Colorado, you can grow eight plants per person. Is that right? That sounds right. And that could be, you know, and I'm guessing you do it hydroponically. I think yeah, a lot of people I would, would. I would guess so, too. You know, I mean, just for the experiment of it, you know, I kind of prefer the glass of wine. That's kind of my more my speed. But sure, but it the is experiment. An, yeah, the challenge is what would it's be the, interesting. It's the excitement. It's the it's the energy, the spirit of experimentation yeah, that, you, that you were able to do it. Like yeah. you, if you can grow a rosemary plant from seed, yeah, Lindsay. I I bow to you. Really? Yes. Is that a, is that a, is that a typically hard thing to I do? I think it is. Oh. Like my rosemary plant that I have out there, I bought. I have you know. Okay. I grew I grew a lavender plant from seed, yeah. and I have that as a badge of honor. Oh, that's wonderful. So. I didn't know that. Well, it's about a half inch long, so let's not count our chickens or okay. our rosemary okay. before right. they hatch. But it's pretty exciting so far. Okay, now friends, if you don't want to spend the money for a kit, because yeah. they can they can get up to like two hundred, three hundred. Yeah. If you want a standing one, you could be spending five hundred dollars. Yeah. They can get right? pricey. But you can also get a little little wee little kit for like thirty bucks. Yeah. But if you wanted to make your own, I'm gonna tell you really quick how to do it. Okay. And I'll put it up on the website too, so people have it. First of all, you need a plastic storage container. Okay. Then you need some PVC pipe. Um, you need about ten feet of it with some of the to PVC elbows and the PVC T's, and you're going to cut them into a grid so you can make a connection to a water pipe. And you probably will need a special tool like a PVC pipe cutter. Okay. That's just in everyone's junk drawer. <laughs> These are just things you have lying around. That's right. Your PVC cutter. Yeah. And so you make this little grid and you drill holes then in the PVC because water is going to get in there and it's going to spray everywhere. And you, and you can buy these little sprayer things that attach uh-huh. to it that will spray 180 degrees or 360 degrees. You want this grid to sit about two inches from the top of this plastic storage container. Uh-huh. And then you're going to drill a hole for a power cord to come in at, uh, near the top okay. and a hole near the bottom for as a, for a drainage plug. 
And then you can put a power, a little pump in the bottom that will be connected to this grid and then um, fill it up with about 10 gallons of water. In the lid of your plastic storage container, you want to cut holes for these little net cups. Oh, yeah. Okay. Which are little cups that have holes in it so that when you put the plant in, then the roots will go through these little these little net cups. And you want to get a little neoprene collar that will protect your plant. And this is for with pre-purchased plants. Okay. You have little seedlings. Okay. Um, and anything that grows in the surface. And you could probably, you know, if you're handsome and handy, you could probably make one of these for like, you know, 10, 15 bucks. And you could grow like 24 plants out of it. Wow, yeah. You could probably do a lot. You could do like some legit produce. Like I would never try to grow tomatoes in this little thing that I've got. Yeah, this you could do the big stuff. Yeah, you could actually have the big stuff indoors and have those wonderful it doesn't tomatoes. doesn't look very pretty, I got to tell you though. No, I, you might want to have a back, back, back bedroom, <laughs> a, a room that doesn't get a lot of use. Yeah. I'm thinking like it might be more for the preppers, you know, the people oh, that are yeah. waiting for the zombie apocalypse. Uh-huh, that are know? like, let's but get self-sufficient. But it could be handy information to have. I think so. And it's cool. And there's so many different ways that you can do these hydroponic systems. To me, I'm glad I got a kit. I am I am not that handy and I am definitely not that patient. Uh, well, I'm getting a kit. I'm not yeah. making one. That's oh, yeah. Good. Yeah. But it is really fun. And then you can start plants this way and plant them outside or just that's, keep the herbs in your garden. That's so cool too. Yeah. You could use it as a seed starter. Yeah. You can just take the sponge right out of the little cage that it's mm-hmm. in and put the sponge directly in the ground and let the... The roots are like already like a foot and a half long underneath my lettuces. It's crazy how well, long they are. In our next episode, Lindsay, you'll be here. We want to update. Okay. I'm going to give I you I can't an wait for it. I hope I have exciting things to share. Yay. Yay. <laughs> oh my God, Lindsay, guess what time it is? What time is it? It's mailbag time. Ring, ring. Very nice. Thank you. I've been excited to say that. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> That's a highlight of my week. <laughs> well, reach into that mailbag and pull out a letter. Okay, it looks like here we have a letter from Catherine in Denver. It says, In the fall, I drastically cut back my geranium plants before bringing them into the house to winter over on the sun porch, which gets down to the low 40s some nights, but I try to keep around 45 to 50 degrees. I've never cut them back like this before when wintering them over. Well, I'm pleased to report they are coming back with new leaves like gangbusters. Of course, no idea if this will help them have more blooms later, but right now they look extremely happy and healthy. I do check them regularly for soil moisture content with a water meter device. A marvelous device. Wonderful. Catherine. Yeah, go Catherine. That's awesome. Well, um, as friends will know that I also overwinter my geraniums and I bring them in. Um, I... We had the horrible mistake a couple years ago thinking they'd be okay in the garage, but it got way too cold. Oh. I also think I forgot about them up there. Oh, yeah. So they bit it. But uh, <laughs> oh, the past couple of years, I have been putting them in my attic, which also, like Catherine's porch, I think mm-hmm. gets to be about 40 degrees, which is pretty yeah. nippy up there. And I have, we've talked about drastically cutting them back. Why do people say to do this? I think it's because, um, so they don't get leggy. Oh. And I think you will get more blooms the next year. So I cut mine back drastically and I went and I put a, I put a little note on my calendar to remind me once a month, go up there and oh, water them. That's smart to do that. So is it, doesn't have, it's more that they don't get leggy and not so much that because that's what they want when they're getting dormant. That could be too though, but hmm. they are, mine are still green. Okay. I could cut them way back. And here's the thing I learned last year, which was when I decided, oh, the weather's really nice now. I'm going to take them out. The mistake I made was I just set them out. Oh. Um, and actually, you have to do like the reverse of hardening off. Yeah. Which is that I should have taken them out, let them get a little bit of sun, uh-huh. and then bring it back in. Because what happened is that all the leaves got a little sun scald. Oh. So then they had to like start all over again. So I didn't get blooms until like July. Oh, man. They were beautiful. Mm-hmm. But I could have had blooms, I think, a lot earlier. But these pots are so big and heavy. I didn't want to like lug them in every day. So yeah. I don't know what I'm going to Yeah. Is I'm that, well, you know, what can you do? Is there a little shade that you can put over them? Yeah, maybe them? I could put like, take the like shade a lawn back chair. and forth. Yeah. Because, you know, I shade my lettuce with my yeah. lawn chair. So maybe I could just put a lawn chair on could them. Maybe lawn chair the day. geraniums. So now. I don't have to take them in all the time or just give them a little break because. 
but they're alive. And I also have some herbs up there too. Oh yeah? Yeah. I, okay. brought in, I had some I had some herbs in pots. I had um, some marjoram and some savory that's still alive up there. So. Oh, wow. Yeah. My herbs are inside and I don't know whether I should be, um, the ones in pots, I don't know whether I should be like letting them be dormant or- I'm letting I, mine grow. I, I don't know. I'm letting mine grow too, mostly because I want to eat them. Yeah, and use them. Yeah, yeah. I'm using them up. Well, um, Catherine, I'm happy about your geraniums. When you're ready to take them out, harden them off the opposite way. And let us know when you get your first blooms. Oh, and I'll let yeah. you know when I get my first blooms. I, I will be, I'll be living vicariously through both of you since I've never had geraniums. <laughs> oh, you should. They're just the best plant. <laughs> Maybe I will. Maybe this will be the year I yeah. break into geraniums yeah. too. They're just the, especially it's nice when you want something blooming after a lot of the perennials are done. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's such a and great I do. Plant. Okay. Yeah, they have big, yeah, and so many different colors you can have. Well, friends, if you have questions, comments, observations, fashion tips, you can write to us. Tell us what to do with our hands. Tell us what to do with our hands when we <laughs> when you can't see them. I don't know. Write to us at UpsideDownTulips.com or at UpsideDownTulips at Gmail. You know, I have felt pretty inspired this episode, but I could use some more inspiration. Always. Do you have some inspiration for us? I Lindsay? have some inspiration for us. Uh, this comes from um, it's a passage I saw in a book called The Midnight Library. It's by Matt Haig, and it goes. She followed her brother inside her flat to start tidying up, catching a glimpse of the clusters of irises in Mr. Banerjee's garden as she went, flowers she hadn't appreciated before, but which now mesmerized her with the most exquisite purple she had ever seen. As though the flowers weren't just colors, but part of a language, notes in a glorious floral melody, as powerful as Chopin silently communicating the breathtaking majesty of life itself. That's making me cry. Oh, I love <laughs> it. It's so beautiful. Oh, it's... I, did, I got, seriously, I got tears in my oh. eyes because I just love irises. Yeah, they are stunning. couple months. It, you, I know, they're so short. You get them briefly, but they're yes. so glorious. They sure are. That is, yeah. that is beautiful. I love that, talking about that, the, the floral melody yeah, yeah, isn't that sweet? And then when you are in them, and it really feels like that. every time I smell an iris, that's so beautiful. I'm like, oh yes, that is that comes from that comes yeah. from deep in the earth. Well, as I wipe the tears from my eyes, oh. friends, you have come to the end of another episode of <laughs> Upside Down Tulips. Thank you so much for listening. We are Lindsay Pierce and Christy Montour Larson. And if you got some laughs and some value out of this week's episode, could you do us a favor? Please hit that subscribe, like, or follow button wherever you listen to your podcasts. Thank you so much to Denise Gentilini for composing and performing the Upside Down Tulips theme song. And if you want more of Denise's music, just go to denisegentilini.com or you can find that link at UpsideDownTulips.com. Many thanks to the talents and kind heart of our friend, Edith Weiss. Thank you, Edith! Join us in two weeks for another episode that will delight and amaze you. And don't forget, Lindsay, if you make a mistake, your garden will forgive you. Thank goodness. <laughs> Upside down.